Good morning. Uh, it's great no, to be working with you. Uh, uh, I on the screen. Okay. On the screen, we can see a picture of a table of salt. A uh, table of salt, yeah. Which we know can be used to add labor to our food. And also, we can also use it as a preservative. Uh, like salted eggs, salted fish. No? So this morning, our message will be on the words that Jesus said when he said that you are the salt of the earth. You, we, the church, we are the salt of the earth. So before we continue with our message, uh, let me first thank you for accepting the fellowship that you've given me in the last 24 days. Because indeed, uh, meaningful days. No? And I also thank God for blessing me. For he has acquainted me with the men. See, Rex of Blue, I think, is already in Australia. No? Uh, G also, it's good to see him once again. See, I think he just arrived yesterday morning. And also, the young people. Um, especially, see, no loyal, see, from Rome. My companions here at night when I stay here at the center. And the women. See, Michelle. Sana to si Michelle. Ah, okay. <laughs> No? Uh, when I when, when Tonton and I visited Michelle, uh, ano po na istoryahan ang mga women, no? ang important ligid sa organization sa women. And when we talk, he, she shared that important, ang, ang important sa pag-or organize with Ami. And I believe na one day, if the women will be organized, natutun na sila na help, no? especially in supporting the ministry of the church. Kaya ang mga men, uh, though tinutuman ang mga men, they are the one who leads the congregation, but the women also has their own uh, work also to perform. So if the men are doing their work, the women are also doing their work, this church will indeed be a great church. No? And I also got to visit some of you in your homes, where Tonton and I also were served Great meals. In Indai Libyano's place, ang mga na tilawag na itong tinulang manok na mitikayo. No? Uh, ito sa ila LC, na gulaw. It was sinigal na isla, ang siguro ito LC ba? <laughs> Kasi it was mixed with with this kamoting kahon. Uh, maybe the soup, uh, this pink fish color, pero na mitik dyan. But what made this meal so tasty is ang ilang paglamit sa asin. No, it was not too much, it was not too little, it was just enough. And they also be sold by themselves. So dahil ang kami historyahan, uh, dito ko ilang hindi, I even met Modelo, no? dito sa sky. And I think he was, <laughs> I think he was looking for a church in Canada. No? Uh, and the best part of my stay here is the word of God that I heard from you, from BCC. The thing this month is opportunity for effective growth based on 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, where on the first Sunday, Brother Rex defined opportunity as a favorable, advantageous circumstance that was open. And one of the points of God's word that Brother Rex gave was opportunity may come when you least expect them. And he gave an illustration, an example to Joseph. Now he had imprisonment became an opportunity to interpret the Pharaoh's dream. So this led him to become the second highest ruler of Egypt. So just a memory check huh? I hope you still remember the messages that was uh, preached this month. No? 
Ano ang hak sa inyong tanaw? No? Ano man ang inyong tanaw that may Joseph accomplish all this? Was it because of his knowledge? Or was it because of his ability? How did Joseph accomplish all that and also see his entire family from the farming? No? Ano ang inyong sikrito? Faith niya. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Wala na ninyo na nagduman? Ha? <laughs> so, ang um, de-emphasize ko ni Brother Rex, the word of God, said na Joseph was able to accomplish all that because he knew God. So, what would be ang sikreto? If you know God, there are a lot of things that you can accomplish that is still beyond your ability. So, ako po. And on the second Sunday, Brother Jake talked about the super typhoon Yolanda and gave Proverbs 9 verse 10 where it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And God's word points that having this healthy fear of the Lord that could be brought about by the typhoon would help people go back to God in prayer. In prayer for help, in study for understanding, and in meditation to know what to do. No? So that was the second Sunday. And last Sunday, si Brother Tonton, I heard, talked about preparing for opportunities. He suggested that you take down notes, remember? No? You take down notes as you hear God's word. So that from Monday to Saturday, as you are spread out into the kingdom of God, doing your work, doing your studies, you may have some word to share to the people sitting beside you or ang inyong mga kaugan sa trabaho. Okay? So, have you, pinsa man sa inyo ang nakadala sa inyong mga notebook this morning? Aman? Okay, very good. <laughs> no? So, I hope you'll be bringing your notes uh, every Sunday, no? because it's really helpful. Ako, kadalaman ko sa akong notebook, and I really write down all the messages that I could also use in sharing also to others. Very helpful chat. Very helpful. Now for our message this morning, let me begin with the letter of 1 Corinthians. Ang 1 Corinthians letter was written by Paul in 58 AD in Ephesus. And the opportunity of effective work he referred to here was Rome. No, not three years before this, no, the information that he got from Priscilla and Priscilla about the church at Rome uh, motivated Paul to write to them a letter and he expressed in his letter in Romans chapter 1 verse 13 saying, I do not want you to be an unaware friend that I plan many times to come to you in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the Gentiles. So this tells us that whether Paul was in Ephesus, in Corinth, or in Rome, God's work for him and the church is always the same. But here again, now, wherever part of the world he is, which is to harvest in those community people who would be disciples of Christ. The only thing that Paul did not expect is that he would be arriving in Rome as a prisoner. But then it did not even stop him from sharing the gospel of Christ. Today, whether in Kagayan, here in Bacolor, the Lord's commission us to go and make disciples of Christ. And he tells his followers in Matthew 5, in Matthew 5, verse 13, You are the soul of the earth, but if the soul loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. So you are 
We are the salt of the earth. So like the tinola of Intai, no? and the sinigala of Elsie, Jesus wants our presence to add flavor to the lives of others. Ang ato, mga conversation ba? No? Masison siya with references to God. And like so, he wants our mouth to speak the word of God, the gospel, that it may preserve the lives of our healers. Mga ang iyang gusto sa ato. So when we don't do this, then the community won't even realize that we exist. That the church is living. We won't matter because we do not make a difference. It's like we have lost our saltiness. And whatever is not significant gets thrown and trampled under foot. So si Paul, looking at his life, he allowed himself that the Lord would use him and he became salt to that generation. So whether in prison or out of prison, he continued to share to make disciples of Jesus. So remember that for us today, ang atong opportunity for effective work is now. So, huh? so how do we add labor? How do we preserve the lives of the people in this community? So we begin in the church and with our family. So we have to so good. Now, we begin with the church and in our family. So, in the church, very important we need to love one another. So, in the family, husbands must lead their wives in the Lord. And then the wives must support their husbands. And then the children, the young people, must develop their commitments. So for our first point of loving one another in the church, the Lord said in John 13, John 13, 34 to 35, it says, A new command I give you. So si Jesus ni ang nagamala. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So in the book, God is in the smoke stuff, the author asks, why is love the only thing that there's just to be alone? And it's true. Why in the world, most of the marriages today suck down when you find love. And even in families, children do not want to go home because they only hear is criticism, grumbling, and quarreling. So, mga, it's a very rare commodity na ang love sa home. But when they come to the church and find us loving each other, so ano man ang impact na sa ila. So they will also want what we have. People do not come to the church to get rich, nor do they come to the church to see how we dress. They come to the church because they want to see God at work in our lives. Mona na kung gusto. So when they enter that gate, we want people to see the joy of the people who are welcoming them on the door. When they come in, we want them to see the reverence of the worship team as they lead the congregation to worship songs, to sing praises to God. And when they hear the preacher, they will see an intimacy that we have with God as He speak God's Word. And then He will experience the love in the assembly, in our fellowship. Mga ang atong gusto. No? So that when they leave this place, ang ilagyan mo ang nangunaan is that they will always thank God. Mga ang atong gusto sa ila. So in I think we've heard of the Indian International. No, as, a, as, a, 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 as a ministry, ang ilagyan mission is to put Bible in public places. Mga public places like hotels and hospitals. No? So, one day, ang isa ka minister sa Church of Christ suggested na rather than put Bibles in the public places, why not give it to the churches? 
from me and good reason is because in the church, people read the Bible because it is significant to them. It is relevant. And when you put it in public places, it will not be able to read the Bible. So, when you put it in public places, it will not be able to read the Bible. So, when you put it in public places, it will not be able to read the Bible. So, when you put it in public places, it will not be able to read the Bible. So, when you put it in public places, it will not be able to read the Bible. So, when you put it in public places, it will not be able to read the Bible. Who calls themselves Christian? Because through that, they will understand the message of the scriptures. Kaya na kadalhan ng mga sa mga tao. The reason why they don't study the Bible is because they think of the Bible as a book with many no-nos. They have forgotten that the Bible, or they don't know. No? But we know that the Bible is not about that. It's about a person. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about a relationship with the Lord and how He can change our lives. So, what is that? No? So, we must love one another. So, on the next point, men must lead their wives in the Lord. In Ephesians 5, verse 25 to 27, it says, Husbands, love your wives, Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up to her. And then in 26, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. And then in verse 27, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. So in these particular passages, no? Jesus did three things to the church, I mean bride. First, He loved and died for her. Ano to? Ang last month? First, He loved and died for her. Are you going to First, He loved and died for her. And then second, He cleansed her in the waters of baptism through God's word. Huh? And then the third, He led her to do God's work that she may be found blameless. So ang lalaki, ang husband, ang ang lead sa wife to do the work in the church. A ministry in the church. For three and a half years, the Lord trained those He sent to make disciples of Christ. So He trained them to do the work of God so that when He returns to heaven, these people will be able to do the work themselves. So, if Jesus did this to the church, it would also mean for us husbands today who follow Jesus that we should also make a sacrifice to show our wives that we revere and love God. No? It's very important. Na ako, we need to make a sacrifice. So on Sundays, dito sa Katayan, worship starts at 7 o'clock in the morning. So when it starts at 7 o'clock in the morning, at 5 o'clock, I'm already awake. And then I prepare first. So after tapos na po, I wake up my wife, and then I wake up my children. And when they wake up, they see me all dressed up. So, dali na na sa ila, dali na na sa ila, mupalo. So, kita mo na lagi, we should make it easier for our wife and children to follow us. So that together, we can go to the worship. Now, madili siya good life. Madili siya good life. And how do I show love to God? So, on one of the Examples that I usually hear is that I obey God's word even when it is not convenient. Like setting aside the tenth of my salary to love for me. So sa akin ang gabi, hindi siya convenient eh. No, kaya you think that week, hindi mo ma-feel na there is a need that you need to to buy. Tapos wala na may korpa. So even if it is not convenient, mag-set aside na ka sa tenth, So, they will not be necessary of them because it is already for the Lord. So, that's showing love. And then number two, speak God's word to her. Show her scriptures like Acts 5, 
verse 29. Acts 5, 29. To make her understand that you follow God. So Acts 5, 29 says, Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. So our wife need to understand that we're leading them in the Lord. It's not our, our word itself, but it is the word of the Lord. No? And then finally, we lead her to do God's work. We let her contribute in the work of the church. Because when they are doing it, I believe that she is happier. No, she is happier. In Proverbs 18.22, it says that he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. So this passage tells us that our asawa, our wives, are gifts from God. If. a condition. They are gifts from God if we lead them in Christ. Otherwise, they can be averted. So men, lead your wives in the Lord. Lead your wives in the Lord. And then we go to the wives. Wives must support their husband. So as the bride, the church was given instruction by the Lord in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. And it says, When Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So this would mean that the wife should first submit to the authority of their husband. But we have a some instruction in Jesus, the church who is his bride. So wives should submit to the authority of her husband. And then, number two, she should support the work of her husband in making disciples of Christ. And then third, she should teach his disciples to reach maturity in Christ. So if the women will learn to disciple the newborns, especially the younger women, so Dhamma will give support. Dhamma will give support. This will become a community where the wives the younger wives will be able to learn to become responsible and they will become loving wives and responsible mothers. No? So when you do this, you are not only taking part in God's purpose for you and your husband, you are also showing respect to your husband. And in doing so, the children will also learn to honor their father. So most of the prison, at the first day of the day, we went to the prison. So most of the pe people in prison are there because they do not have a father that they can look up to. Mona, they are not alone, but most. And their mothers did not give them any reason to do so. So the hope you have in your role of mothers. The hope you so in your example of how you support your husband and how you respect them will also be the example that your children are also going to follow. If you do not respect your husband, how then will you expect your children to honor them? No? Very important. And then finally, our third to a point is that children or the young people must develop commitments. So in the parable of the sower, si Jesus, he did not paint a beautiful picture sa heart sa tao. Like it's hard, kung ano kayo bato, kung ano kayo sapot, ano na ang picture na yung pinapaint. That's why Jesus thought that it was necessary for God's word to take root in the heart of a person. Not just to take nourishment from the word of God and for the soul, but in order to stand through heat and strong winds. So it 
always with the young people. If you are to be looked upon to bear fruit for the Lord, then you are going to let the Word of God look down. If all God did in you have the Word of God say in your heart. Diba sa mga activities na yung mga programs, saan we volunteer ourselves? Minsan ang mga opening prayer, we raise up our hands. Minsan ang mga review ang mga area, we raise up our hands. Minsan ang mga andam sa mga pagkakang, we raise up our hands. We volunteer. So, we take a job and pay. And when we go, we better ask ourselves, what have taken root in our heart? Is it God? Is it ourselves? Is it pleasure? Is it family? So it is important that we need to develop our commitment by fulfilling the responsibilities that we have accepted. No? Not in the If you volunteer yourself, kung pilit ka mong tunga. No? So, you need to develop it. Deliver what you agree to do or you will ultimately have to answer to God for that commitment. So, ang yung people there, I have observed that you have a lot of things going for you. Like for instance, sa worship team, you have happened as a worship leader. No? Sa yung people, you have said, as the young people leader, no? Uh, so, si Seth. So, ang inyo lang yung importante is to focus. If you can focus and develop your commitment, I believe that there are so much things that you can do. So, si Jesus, again, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. Si Peter, He allowed himself to be used by God and then on the day of Pentecost, what happened when he gave the message of God? 3,000 to tao ang mga to base as God. Si Paul allowed himself to be a soul of the earth and then by allowing God to use him, he brought the gospel from Antioch to Asia Minor and then it reached Europe. So, sa akong It's very important that we love one another. And if you're a husband, be your wife to the Lord. And if you're a wife, support your husband. And if you're a young people, develop your commitments. So in, in closing, let me share to you a story. Okay, let's say that. Do you want to know a story? Okay. Uh, there's a video, no? Uh, about a fairy tale entitled The Fisherman and His Wife. So, this young couple lived in a hut. So, they came as a hut and then they, and then they did not have much except each other. So, the fisherman catches fish each day and his cats will feed them for the day. More than in their life every day. But then they were happy. So, one day, A fisherman went to the sea and then he caught a magical fish named Elmo. No? Makakampal niya ng fish. And then Elmo back and asked the fisherman kung pwede, i-release lang siya. No? And then he would grant him his wishes. Okay? So, take man ang fisherman, na if I'm going to release you, wala na niyong tao kung niya to be king. No? But eventually, The fisherman let Elmo go. So, kung ito niya sa ilang balay, that night, he told his wife about it. And the wife cried. He beat him to his wife. He beat siya, he beat. And said that his husband did not care for her. For if he had, or if he had loved her, then, iyang ang ta-i-wish ang iyang wife, ang tagaan siya o beautiful na dress. Wala man lang natin niya na kulaunaan ang iyong wife. So, ang iyong mga silina, tala na ang iyong mga bayo, puro na o, wala man lang siya bako. So, after hearing kanang request sa iyong wife, so, and what the fisherman did, he went back to the sea and went to pay for Elmo. So, tawag ka siya, Elmo! Elmo! 
And then when we found him and made his wife's request known, then Elmo granted his wish. So when he went, when he went home, pag-uli niya, kita niya niya yung wife, na happy din kayo. Oh, she was dancing around the house, so no na na niya ang yung pag-uma tayo. But then it was short-lived. And yung happiness was only short-lived. Then later, na ang story ng sasya sa yung isip niya nas, ba? Ano siya na, ano pa ha? Ano kung bigugalan niyo mo o big house o kwarta? O kung with the rest? Okay, na yung mga ka, ka, kachara ng akong tayo, but then, it does not fit with my house. So, balik mo rin si Elmo, ah, balik mo rin si Mang Fisherman dito sa, sa sea, and again, ask Elmo for a young wife for request. And then it was granted. So, pagbalik niya sa si ilang balay, he was surprised. Hindi ka naman pa yung tao. No? Ang ginawa niya sa ilang wife, nag-help siya o party, and she invited all her neighbors. So, auto, ipakita niya niya ng silina, kakaw sila. And then after a week of partying every day, the wife got bored again and told her husband na mas maayo siguro maging mong kong queen of the gypsies. May pag-uring mo na din sa balay lang. And we are always uh, meeting with the same neighbors. Mas maayo na I will be traveling around the world. So, balik ko ito ito ang yung husband ng fisherman dito sa sea. Di pa nga yung ito niya sa iya. Sa, sa elmo ang iyang wife na request. So, kung kapagbalik niya, ang iyang wife, nangyong na na queen of the gypsies. And again, it was short-lived. Ang iyong nasa ng iyang wife, kung pwede, nangyong po siya ang president of the country. And then after a month, nag-request na sa ng iyang wife, to become the ruler of the world. And then finally, ang gusto na sa second wife is to become the queen of the universe. So, pagbalik sa iyong husband dito kang Elmo, mawag ano siya sa gitna sa lawod ba na? No? Sa lawod. Ang skies were already dark. Kusog na kayong hangin with matching lightning. Parang sa buhok na si Elmo. <laughs> so, yan mo lang siya ni Elmo. Don't you know that if I'm going to grant your wish, you would lose your wife. So, the fisherman answered yes. Pero yun ang ayun siya mo, from the very beginning, since you've been coming to me, ang parang na ayun bina, bina, binapangayo, is puro ang request, puro ang wishes sa inyong mind. Hindi nga nang tigan told me about kung ano ang inyong wish. Ano ka ang inyong wish? So, ang inyong sa picture na I just wanted my wife to be happy. O ang last niya gusto. I just want her to be happy. So, Evan said, then your wish is not there. So, pauling na si ang picture na very sad because He expected that if he didn't have a wife, he didn't have a wife, the wife would have already left her take dream of the university of the children. But then when, when he went home, he saw that in the place of the house, in the house of the house, he went home and out came her, his wife, very much happy, very 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 happy. So what was the story? So what have we learned? It's a story. Now, we've learned three things. First, a wife, she did not know what to make her happy. Actually, she was already happy in the very beginning. Pero wala lang siya kapalo. Then, second, she thought that her happiness will lie sa mga pag-brand sa iyong mga wishes. Mula ang iyong mga una. And third, the only thing that would make one happy is that if you have something that you have placed your attention, your effort, and your time, your entire being into some something. Mura na siya, hindi mo na siya na nakay value sa inyo. Mura na hindi mo na siya na nakay significant sa inyo. Ano ba yun? Ano yung mga wishes na nagaan siya o dako ang position, dako ang mga responsibilities, 
Bapak saya ialah anak Allah Kita sih tidak buruk boleh Walaupun aku ini ini sedia Kau mahu tuh ibang itu Pero, kata orang gamai patu ia balai She was very much happy because she was part of the world She was part of building the relationship She was part of building that house Part siya sa iyang husband sa kapit sa iyong life together And I believe the same is also true for the church Ang church, hindi ka ni siya at church sa mga pipila ng katawa Dili na siya church na sa mga leaders. This is our church. No? Because this is the church of Jesus Christ. And we are all heirs with Christ. And God would want us na kini siya na church will have meaning to us. Gusto niya na tagsa-tagsa sa atong contribute kita. Sa atong time, sa atong resources, sa atong attention, sa atong effort. In the same way that Jesus gave Himself up, because if we do, if we do, this church, this family, will become important to you, huh? and then we will become the soul in this community, and God will be able to change, transform this community through us. So let us begin in the church. No, and in our families. Husband, what do we do? Love your wife. Wives, ano nga ang atong wato? Support your husband. Young people. They have a lot of people. Sige. I would like to request everyone to be nice. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are thanking you, Lord for allowing us Father to take part in the work that you are doing here in the power. And we're praying Father that you will continue to be with the men of this church. Give them wisdom Father and continue Lord to flow through them to your love and also the wives to be men of this church Father that you will also open up your hearts Father that they will be able to work with their husbands the men of the church so that as people will look at the lives of the people who are in this church, Father, they will indeed see that you are with us. We are also praying, Lord, for the young people that as they dedicate themselves and explore the areas where they can serve you best, continue to develop your commitment, Father. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.